and welcome again to Brian Park Stage. Excited to announce our last speaker of the day today, who will be Salman Bassett. I actually interned under Salman, um, and he taught me so much during the summer, so I'm up here emceeing for him. Product management here at Mongo, and he's talking about new data security capabilities in MongoDB. So please give a warm welcome to Salman. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Salman Basid, the director of product at uh, MongoDB, and I'm excited to talk to you today about new data security capabilities in MongoDB. This presentation contains forward-looking statements, so this is a standard safe harbor slide. This is the agenda of my talk. I will be describing uh, two capabilities for identity and access management that uh, will be GEing, gen be generally available this later this month. They are Workforce Identity Federation and Workload Identity Federation. I will then also give an overview of what's coming in Adoto for queryable encryption as well as audit logs. So let's get started with identity and access management. Let me give you some background. Um, so there are two main use cases for database user access. Uh, the so-called human user access, your employees need to authenticate with the database. Um, for example, you know, your employees could be developers who are building the applications. These could be the operations people who need to debug a production problem. These could be analysts. These could be scientists or other teams. The patients who need to authenticate with the database to insert the data, delete the data, update the data as the users are using those applications. So human users, workforce, and programmatic users, workloads. MongoDB provides multiple mechanisms for both um, for these uh, two scenarios today. They include LDAPs, Scram, and authentication mechanism, Scram being the username and password, as well as AWS IAM. So what are some of the pain points with these uh, authentication mechanisms? With, um, with LDAPs, uh, this authentication mechanism predates cloud. It's complex to set up. It requires uh, creating inbound network connection to your LDAP identity provider. And it is not a, really a cloud native option. MongoDB also supports Scram uh, and X019 authentication mechanism. If you're using those mechanisms, both for your, either for your workforce or for your applications, you have to manage the identity lifecycle of database users that use these authentication mechanisms. You have to manage the password complexity. You have to manage the rotation of secrets, and so on and so forth, which is not quite simple to do. Lastly, if you're on AWS, uh, you can use AWS IAM as the authentication mechanism, both for workloads and workforce. But this is not an option for customers who are on Azure or GCP. So what is the solution to these pain points? The solution to these pain points is to introduce uh, identity federation so that you can manage the identity lifecycle of both your workforce, human users, and workload application users within your identity provider or within your cloud provider of your choice. what we have done, and that's what we're introducing. So with Identity Federation, your employees or human users will be able to authenticate with MongoDB Atlas clusters, uh, with your organization's identity provider, which could either be uh, Azure's Antra ID, Okta, or Ping. Or it can also be in any Open ID Connect, uh, uh, Open ID Connect uh, compatible identity provider. For your applications, your applications can use Azure managed identities or service principles or GCP service accounts, whether they are user managed or GCP managed, uh, to authenticate uh, with MongoDB Atlas clusters. Now, let me talk to you about um, Workforce Identity Federation. That is how uh, we have implemented. Um, uh, a mechanism for your employees to authenticate with MongoDB Atlas clusters using your corporate identity provider. So as I mentioned earlier, Workforce um, Identity Federation allows uh, your employees to authenticate with MongoDB Atlas clusters 
using single sign-on, using OpenID Connect as the identity provider. Its benefits are centralized identity management. You have complete control over the password requirements for your uh, employees. You can enforce MFA policies. You can enforce session timeouts. There's also, your employees do not have to share their credentials with a MongoDB Atlas clusters. And it's a good alternative to replace LDAP. How it works at a high level, your employees, when they need to, act, to authenticate with MongoDB Atlas clusters, they will open Compass or Shell. They will connect to a cluster, and there they will be prompted uh, to, uh, to open a, a web browser will be open where they will be prompted to enter their, uh, your, you know, their corporate identity a username and password along with their FA, MFA credentials. Once your identity provider has validated those credentials, your identity provider will issue an access token. Then the user or the compass or shell on behalf of the user will present that access token to MongoDB Atlas cluster, which will verify this access token and establish a database session. How does it work? In a, a little bit more detail. So there is one time setup involved, and then there is the access management setup. One-time setup involves um, you to set up your identity provider configuration in your identity provider. Right? So you will have to set up a SSO application uh, for MongoDB access in your Android or Okta. Then with an Atlas, the organization owner role will have to set up the identity provider configuration in Atlas. So that's a one-time setup. Then for the access management, um, you will create user groups within the identity provider for the relevant database uh, groups that you want um, in for Atlas clusters. You will then add users to those database groups. So for example, you can create a database group which is only read-only, or you can create a database group which is both read and write. Then finally, you will add those database groups that you have created in your identity provider as database groups in MongoDB Atlas. Um, so what are some of the authentication mechanisms, options that we support? We support a browser-based option and a browser-less option. So if you are working, um, you know, if you're running Compass, if your developers are running Compass and Shell, they can authenticate with a cluster, a browser will open on the screen, and then they can authenticate with, you know, enter their corporate identity provider credentials and authenticate with the cluster. This is the authorization code with PKCE option. In other situations, your developers or operations people may need to jump, may, may need to first log on to a jump host. It may not be possible to open a browser on that jump host. In that particular case, the client uh, will display a short, um, a short uh, URL and a short code which the users can enter uh, in, your, in MongoDB shell, and then they will be authenticated with MongoDB Atlas clusters. So from a screenshot perspective, these are the three screenshots that show the one-time Atlas configuration, the Atlas access management configuration, and the authenticating, authenticating with MongoDB Atl uh, Atlas cluster via MongoDB shell. These screenshots do not show the, um, um, the uh, identity provider configuration. I know it's, it's probably hard for you to see, um, but you know those database users that you will create, those groups that you will create in your identity provider are, are being added um, as a, the database group in the second screenshot. Third screenshot, uh, the user is authenticating with the MongoDB Atlas cluster using OpenID Connect as the authentication mechanism. Let me now talk about uh, uh, when this feature will be available. So this feature will be generally available within this month. It is available in MongoDB Atlas and Enterprise Advanced for 7.0 clusters. In Atlas, this feature is available for M10 plus clusters as well as the Data Federation clusters. This feature is supported in MongoDB and Compass. And there is no additional cost or fee to use this feature. And this is so because it is in line with our philosophy that course security features like, like uh, these should be made available free of cost to all our customer base. 
Next, I'm going to talk about Workload Identity Federation, um, which is how your applications can authenticate with MongoDB Atlas clusters using your native identity providers or cloud providers. Similar to the workforce, Workload Identity Federation allows your applications to be configured with a identity uh, that you manage in your identity provider or in cloud provider. Workload Federation is based on OR2, which is a standards framework. Benefits are somewhat similar to, to, to the Workforce Federation. It allows you to have centralized management. Uh, it allows quote unquote passwordless authentication from your application when your applications are running inside Azure VMs or the Google Compute Engines. It is the equivalent of AWS IAM authentication mechanism that we support for AWS. When your applications authenticate using this feature, they will get short-term access tokens, which they can present to MongoDB Atlas clusters. And then uh, they will be, upon successful authentication, your applications can then be write to database. How it works. Um, so your application, which is on the left, the backend application, first authenticates with the authorization endpoint of either your identity provider or cloud provider. If it's a cloud provider, your application will be authenticating with the Azure STS service short, or the Google accounts. It will authenticate with, those, with the authorization endpoints, obtain an access token, and then present those access tokens to MongoDB Atlas clusters. How does it work in more detail? Similar to the Workforce uh, Federation, there is a one-time setup and there is the access management setup. One-time setup is similar to the Workforce Federation. You set up an um, a, uh, SSO application inside your identity provider. Then within Atlas, the organization uh, owner configures the SSO application that you have set up inside your identity provider, also inside Atlas. Then for access management, uh, let's say you're running an application in Azure uh, VMs or GCP. You will create an appropriate Azure managed identity or a service account uh, uh, in, in the case of GCP. Assign those managed identities or service account to the appropriate resource. Then within Atlas, you will add those service principles or managed identities as database users into MongoDB Atlas. What are some of the authentication options that are supported? So there is the built-in option that is supported, which supports passwordless authentication with Azure uh, VMs and GCP Compute Engine. It allows your application that is running inside an Azure VM or GCP Compute Engine to obtain that access token. Here is a sample code from the MongoDB Python driver. We also support a callback mechanism so that if you have if you are using an identity provider for application identities other than Azure or GCP, you can implement your own callback function, obtain the appropriate access tokens via this callback function from that service, and then present that token to MongoDB Atlas cluster via the application. So how does this work in, in, in practice? Um, so, um, with the workload identification, this, this, uh, this diagram shows the workflow. So on the top, you have the application or driver, which is running inside either an Azure VM or a Google Compute Engine. This Azure VM or Google Compute Engine has been assigned the appropriate um, managed identities or service principle. Application uses MongoDB driver to, to authenticate with the Azure GCP or IAM. Then the driver calls the appropriate Azure GCP IAM to request an access token. Azure GCP will only generate the access token if the appropriate service principle was assigned to this VM. Once the GCP or Azure generates the access token and gives it to the MongoDB driver, MongoDB driver then sends this access token to MongoDB Atlas cluster. Atlas cluster verifies this token, verifies the claims in that service token, and then um, uh, determines that if this user is authorized to access 
the appropriate database collections or uh, or or uh, databases and then a database session is established upon a successful authentication so this is a flow for workload identity federation for the built in scenario like i said we also support the callback mechanism the advantage of the callback mechanism is that if you want your applications to authenticate with mongodb clusters but your application identities are being managed in a provider other than azure or gcp this is the option for you in this case what you would do is that you know you you still have your application on the top left in the in the rectangle box which calls mongodb driver the driver will um, then call a callback function that your application will provide to the driver within the callback function you can write all the appropriate logic for calling uh, for invoking the for talking to the authorization service of your identity provider obtaining the relevant access token and then presenting that access token to mongodb atlas cluster once the token is presented to the mongodb atlas cluster the cluster verifies this token and a session is is established how it works in terms of screenshots um um these are the screenshots um from azure and gcp uh, for the atlas configuration of azure and 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 gcp um so on the left hopefully i don't know if you can see that but on the issuer uri there is the sts.windows.net that you that is being added as the issuer on the right uh, in the right screenshot account.google.com is being added as the issuer ui uri so you configure configure both the azure and gcp configura configuration one time in the atlas uh, identity federation application then you would create the appropriate service accounts or manage identities in azure and gcp which is not shown in this slide and once those identities have been created you add them as database users it's hard to see on this slide um but uh, on the on the slide on the left the the guid of the of the azure service principle is being added and for the slide on or for the picture on the right the guid of the gcp service account is being added as the database user in in the database user add screen and then finally uh, your application that is running inside the google the azure vm or the compute engine can use mongodb driver to obtain the access token present that token to uh, to uh, mongodb cluster and verify the access so you can see that this simple code is doing all the back end work uh, for uh, for authenticating your application with with the mongodb atlas cluster so that's about the workload federation this uh, again the benefits of workload federation is that it allows you to manage your application identities directly within your existing uh, authentic existing identity management um uh, framework such as you know gcp or azure and you don't have to separately manage scram credentials or x19 credentials separate from all other application identities this feature will also be generally available later this month it is supported for mongodb um 7.0 and beyond uh, it is uh, well supported for atlas dedicated clusters m10 and beyond we support java c sharp node and python drivers and like the workforce federation there is no additional fee to use this feature next um let me switch gears from identity and access management and talk about what's coming in 8.0 from a security perspective in 7.0 we introduced queryable encryption feature queryable encryption feature allows customers to run to do encrypted queries on randomized encrypted data meaning that you send some encrypted text to database which indicates to database that here is here are some of the records that i want to i want to retrieve database is not able to decrypt your query but is still able to find all the matching records that this query is representing and present those records back to the application and then the application decrypts the encrypted values in those database records that was the equality that was the equality feature we introduced back in 7.0 
in A.0, we are building upon that feature. We'll be introducing what is called range queries. Range queries would allow you to present an encrypted range to database, to MongoDB Atlas cluster, so you, you'll be able to, to say that I want to retrieve all between a min and a max. But in this particular case, your application is going to encrypt the min and max and send the encrypted min and max to MongoDB Atlas clusters. MongoDB Atlas clusters will, will interpret those queries. The query encryption will interpret those queries, retrieve all the records, and send all those records back to your application. Your application will be, then be able to decrypt the, the account values within your, the, the, those database records and then present those uh, records to uh, your, the users of that application. So that's queryable encryption range support that will be coming in 8.0. Another feature we are introducing in 8.0 is uh, OCSF format, or Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework Format. The security operations team today have, have to do a lot of, to not only have to ingest MongoDB Atlas uh, database logs, but they have to ingest logs from many other uh, uh, aspects of the system, including applications, uh, other databases, and so on and so forth. Security teams often spend a lot of time in normalizing that log so they can do uh, security operations properly. Recognizing this toil, Amazon and a bunch of other companies got together and released Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework 2022. This format allows the logs, especially the audit logs, to be created in a specific format so it is easy to ingest. It reduces the toil on the security teams to normalize those logs uh, before um, ingesting them into the appropriate SIEM tools. With MongoDB 8.0, we'll be introducing OCSF format for um, uh, audit logs um, so that uh, the audit logs are generated in this format and then you can ingest these audit logs into your SIEM tools without uh, normalizing them. Uh, overall, this will help uh, streamline your security operations and make it easy for your security teams to focus on their jobs, which is security operations. Additionally, um, uh, earlier this year, um, we introduced this feature, push logs to S3, uh, that I wanted to, to highlight for this audience. If you are an enterprise uh, customer, you probably have to pull and ingest database audit logs or regular logs into your SIM tools. The mechanism which was supported up until earlier uh, this year was that you had to call an Atlas Administration API to pull these logs regularly. In order to do so, your application would, uh, you will have to write an application that runs on a periodic basis, let's say every five minutes, calls the Atlas API every five minutes and downloads those logs and then stores them into Atlas. You have to ensure that this application that you've written the was running continuously. It required work uh, at your end. But the, the general philosophy being that we wanted uh, yeah, we to be also be delightful, we have introduced this new feature called Push Logs to S3, where you can configure MongoDB Atlas with, your, with the S3 bucket uh, of your own. When, once this configuration is done, this is a one-time configuration, MongoDB will push all the relevant audit logs and database logs to the S3 bucket without any work on your part. These logs will be pushed every five minutes or so. So uh, to wrap up my talk, in this talk I gave you, uh, I described uh, the two features that will be generally available later this month. That is the workload uh, um, identity federation and workforce identity federation. And I also gave you an overview of what's coming in a dotto. With that, I will conclude my talk, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you.